Okay, uh, welcome back to the next block lesson. This is where we start moving into another direction here in the virtual space. And as you can see here, one, two, three represents a sorted collection. When we were doing our searching, we had our collection already sorted. Now we're going to see how to sort something. Okay, uh, how, how do we get a collection in that order? Yeah, one, two, three. So we're going to look into that uh, for the next few blocks here and really dive in and dig in uh, to this concept of sorting. Okay, so again, welcome back. Welcome to the next block lesson in this algorithms course. My name is Coder J. This is the JCS Computer Science Channel. This channel is designed to deliver to you as much information as possible within computer science to increase your learning capacity in as many iterations as possible. I'm in the virtual computer lab every day, gathering more and more information as things evolve from moment to moment. I belong to the science department on the second floor of the admin building. I work out of the computer lab C2 uh, in that room. So again, my name is Coder J and this is the virtual space where we work to harness knowledge and here is where we evolve and solve problems within a relevant logic. Okay. Um, within relevant logic, right? So let's continue with this algorithms course. You know, we're looking at uh, for today in this block sorting techniques. So let's look at sorting techniques from within the space. So here is one, two, three arranged in a particular format. And when we do this, we are allowing ourselves to be more optimized in our search and represent the data in a more acceptable format. So let's say you have a directory, like a telephone directory, trying to find certain people, uh, like a dictionary that stores words in a good old uh, sorted order. So we want to be able to stay efficient and find things quickly and in their place. Okay, so we're going to look at some of the sorting techniques that we can use and we have a nice thing called stable sorting like what you see here and uh, then we have unstable sorting when where the numbers were, would cross over and we need to find other techniques to bring those back into sorted order Increasing order, decreasing order, like one, two, three, three, two, one. And then there is uh, unstable order where they're not in any kind of order. So there, you know, there are different techniques we can use. And the first technique is a thing called bubble sort. Okay. And then we'll look at the others as we go along. But let's start with a thing called bubble sort. Um, you know, which is a, a very stable type of algor algorithm, if you will. And and that's what it is, right? That's what, what this is. So um, O of N squared is the time complexity in on this one. N is a number of items to sort. So... Uh, you know, it's, it is O of N squared. It is, it's, it's okay. 
All right. Not not the you know. That's the worst case is what I'm saying. So let's assume we have N elements in the collection. So we can further say that the swap function will help us to get those items in sorted order before we can do something like a search, right? Um, so we're definitely taking it one step uh, backwards, if you will. Um, we're, we're, we're basically going down one level with sorting from where we were with searching. Um, becoming more granular now. How do we get our collection to a sorted order before we search something? All right, so we're taking, we're continuing on in that direction. So we have, um, so let's say, okay, let's see. So let's say we have some items here, right? Okay, we're taking it one step deeper from where we were with the searching. Think of it that way. We're continuing on here. All right, some values, right? So, okay, so 30 and some other number and some other value. Okay. You know, and, and you know, so now we're presented with this type of collection. We weren't used to this before, right? We already had a sorted collection and we just found what we needed to find. So with O of N squared time complexity, we have to put this in sorted order. So bubble sort is what we're gonna use um, right now. So in this sorting uh, algorithm, we're gonna look at the first two elements and simply compare them to check which one is more um, in value, uh, Boolean check who, who is who is greater, right? Is 30 greater than two? That is true, move 30 to the right, okay? So now two goes into that position. Move to the next, uh, move the pointer over to this guy. That's now 30, so it's 30 greater than um, nine, yes, so move 30 here. Okay, so 30 is now going this way. Is 30 greater than 14? Yes, move 30 to the right. Is 30, 30 greater than uh, seven, move 30 to the right. Is 30 greater than four, move 30 to the all the way to the end, okay? And then how it works is as you move all the way to the right, Then there in bubble sort, it's uh, it's this thing where you traverse back to the back to the left. So you go all the way, all the way, all the way to the end, like that. So so let's say thirty is here. Thirty ended up at the end. So now thirty is where it should be. Two is where it should be, right? So thirty is now all the way over here and then you have the others that are uh, not uh, sorted yet uh, here potentially so now within that range you're going to compare you're going to go to the left and compare in, in this case what you see 14, where's where 14 and 7 are? You're going to compare, swap. 
seven and nine, if you will, uh, compare swap two and nine or, you know, whatever was here in the two spot. So in other words, index one, two, three, four, right? So index one to four, index four and three swap index three and two, if necessary, swap index two and one, if necessary, swap like that. So that's the order that you're going to take it. You go all the way to the right. And then from the right all the way back to the left, you're traversing like this. Sort. Sort. Right? So let me try that. Let me say that again. If for, for this collection, using bubble sort, go this way. Compare all the elements. Zero, one, one, two, um, two, three, three, four, four, five, all right? So you're going to compare them and swap if necessary. And you, and you do the same thing all the way back. Five, four, swap, four, three, compare, swap. Three, two, compare, swap, two, one, compare, swap like that. Okay, so the, you know, so there are values in here, right? And these are the indexes. This is bubble sort, a sorting technique, an algorithm that we're looking at right now in the virtual space. I'm currently in the virtual computer lab right now, working on this. Okay, so I'm in the science department on the second floor of the admin building. Uh, that's where I'm at. Um, uh, that's the department that I belong to, if you will. Uh, so I work with that, uh, with my team in that department. So um, right now I'm trying to deliver to you how the bubble sort algorithm works. These are the indexes. So if you wanted to sort this, you go from zero all the way to the right. Zero and one, compare, swap if necessary. One and two, compare, swap if necessary. Two and three, compare, swap if necessary. Three and four, compare, swap if necessary. Four and five, compare, swap if necessary, okay? That's the first pass, okay? Now, you work your way back and do the same thing. All right? So I'm going to do this right here. Look, like this. So go all the way back. Four and five, compare swap if necessary. Three and four, compare swap if necessary. Two and three, compare swap if necessary. One and two, compare swap if necessary. Zero and one, compare swap if necessary. Sorted. Right, I'm giving you the logic. We just solved it in the virtual space, just like that. Um, that is how we're stepping through it using the virtual space as a bridge language, right? Now we can solve it or try to solve it using Python. So that is kind of <clears throat> where we are here in the, um, in the virtual school system on the JCS Computer Science channel. Okay, so let's now work <clears throat> to solve this using Python. Okay, let's continue with bubble sort in Python. Let's open up a Python REPL to continue working on this. So good job, let's continue to work on solving bubble sort now using Python. So we'll define using a standard naming convention, right? It's just bubble sort like that. So for I in the range of the size, we need to know that we can swap, right? Okay, so let's do that. 
Okay, we're going to work on a swapping, you know, logic as well within this within this function. Okay, so let's see. It is a nested loop. Start at zero. Go to size minus i minus one. Okay, size of that collection. Increment by one. So if uh, no, well, we'll swap here. So temp variable is something that we use to initiate a swap. All right, to the you know, index into the collection of the inner loop. Collection of J now equals the collection of the next item over. Okay, and then collection of that X item is now swapped. Okay, now we swapped it. If nothing, then break or stop. So we're traversing through the entire range, you know, range of the collection. And its length, and then finding, you know, as we did in the virtual space, you're going from right to left. So we're comparing the two and swapping. So the temp variable helps us to store something in memory temporarily in that particular time. So as we are in the time and the space, the O of n squared, you know, you know, uh, iterating through it, traver traversing through it to the right and then to the left. You're comparing indexes 0 and 1, 1 and 2, and so on. So index 0 might be, you know, the uh, array of J um, in this case. So that collection, if you will, which is a which is an array in this case, um, is zero now will equal the next one over if it is greater than the next one over, which is j plus one. j plus one is now temp. So that is a standard way to swap. That's how Python looks at uh, what we just did. So if we said, you know, one and two, index one and two, and we said compare the two and swap if necessary, that's us using the English bridge language in the virtual space. So we say it as, okay, compare zero and one, compare, swap if necessary, swap, sort, right? Python says if collection of J is greater than collection of J plus one, temp equals collection of J, collection of J equals collection of J plus one, J plus one equals temp, and change swap, swaps to uh, one, okay, which is basically kind of a truth value there. So it should be just swap. Um, it should be, uh, yeah, swap, as you, see, as you see there. Yep, okay. So now, uh, now, now we're good. Okay, that, that's fine. So now let's... Um, create our collection of values, right? Okay, there's the length of the array um, of the collection in this case. Let's print that collection and let's go ahead and get, you know, get it, get it sorted. So call the sort with the length 
and then print. So now we should have a sorted collection, right? We should be able to see this as sorted at this point. All right, so let's test it out. Let's see if we get, you know, if we, we can now solve bubble sort using Python. Okay, I wanted to add a new collection. I wanted to extend the collection a little bit. All right, so let's continue. Let's kind of re uh, iterate through here and uh, work on it uh, some more. So the length. And the sorted, right? Collection length. And then we want to be able to then print collection and then print collection. So that's the, uh, the sense here of what we're trying to do with getting this to sort. So that's a much better uh, collection. I uh, just wanted to extend it a little bit. And that's how you're gonna call uh, your length and then print it, sort it, pretty straightforward. We should get a nice sort here. Okay, so now the bubble sort uh, has been solved using Python, as you can see. So, so we've accomplished our task here. We solved it in the virtual space using the bridge language. And now we're solving it using Python as a language. All right. So I'll see you next time.